Today on Echoes Through Time, we explore the realm of jesters. When we conjure the term jester, our minds often drift to the medieval epic, where these flamboyant figures, bedecked in multi-hued garb and bedizened with jangling headgear, regaled the courts of European monarchs. However, the jester's influence spans far beyond Europe's confines, traversing civilizations from ancient Egypt under the pharaohs to indigenous tribes of the Americas. Among the annals of antiquity, we encounter Yushi, a Chinese jester who regaled Duke Xian during the reign of King Hu of the Zhou Dynasty. In the 7th century BC, his existence is substantiated by a succinct text wherein the jester himself proclaims, I am a jester, my words cannot affront. A hallmark of jesters is their unique ability to critique the powerful in a manner no one else would dare. Yet, did they truly relish unrestricted liberty to articulate themselves as they pleased? As we shall delve into in this video, this hinged largely upon the temperament of their patron and the jester's acumen, in discerning the boundaries not to be transgressed with their humor. Jesters transcended gender boundaries, and entertained not solely kings and aristocrats, but also roamed as itinerant artisans in markets and fairs. Though it may seem an inglorious vocation, being a jester in the Middle Ages was, in truth, much coveted. Dwelling at court assured comforts, and the privilege of accompanying those who steered the destinies of others. Hence, those who succeeded in eliciting laughter from the mighty could luxuriate in a life, far superior to most. Some jesters garnered renown, due to conspicuous physical deformities or mental idiosyncrasies deemed comical in their era. Yet, many others distinguished themselves through wit or artistic prowess. These jesters did not merely jest, they sang, executed acrobatics, enacted theatrical pieces, recited verse, and more. Beyond their entertainment value, jesters frequently assuaged tensions in conflict-ridden scenarios, for instance, in Australia, Mernjin tribe jesters would ludicrously mimic disputants to divert and amuse them. In Europe, certain jesters attained eminence owing to unique talents. Consider Roland the Farter, a 12th century English flutist famed for his remarkable feat of whistling and flatulating simultaneously while airborne. Contrary to popular belief, jesters were not mere buffoons but sagacious and shrewd individuals. This sagacity was imperative to remain proximate to power, and continually innovate their repertoire to ensnare their audience's attention. Jesters played pivotal roles in the courts, from lifting the spirits of their patrons in moments of sorrow to acting as discreet confidants and advisors. Though their primary duty was to entertain, jesters wielded significant influence over their patrons' decisions, owing to their proximity and candor. Their roles as advisors and mediators often afforded them privileged positions at court, and in some cultures, they even had the power to influence the fate of rulers. The history of jesters is a captivating blend of entertainment, intelligence, and cunning, shedding light on a unique and often underestimated facet of the past. Returning to Europe, specifically to 16th century France. We encounter Nicolas Ferriol, better known as Triboulet, the jester who served King Francis I. Some historians suggest that there might have been two successive jesters named Triboulet in the French court, and anecdotes about both intertwine in history. One of the most renowned tales recounts how, on one occasion, Triboulet, visibly concerned, confided in the monarch that a court member whom the jester had ridiculed with particular ferocity, had threatened to kill him. Seeking to reassure Triboulet, the king assured him, If anyone dares to harm you, I will order their execution just a quarter of an hour later. 
To which Tribulet astutely replied, Thank you, my lord. But could you do it a quarter of an hour earlier? On another occasion, much to the amusement of those present in the hall, Tribulet decided to give King Francis I a resounding slap on the buttocks. Enraged, the monarch demanded a good excuse for not ordering his execution. I am truly sorry, your majesty. The jester responded. Oh, I did not recognize you. I thought you were the queen. The jester's response only further infuriated the king, who sentenced Tribulet to death. However, the king made a mistake in recognizing the jester's years of service and allowed him to choose how he would die. Tribulet opted to die of old age, a response that amused the king so much that he commuted the death sentence to exile. The figure of the court jester began to decline in Europe. In the 17th century, surpassed by other forms of entertainment such as theater. Over time, many jesters chose to take their artistic talents to broader and more lucrative stages. In this vast historical panorama, Jan Lacosta stands out as one of the last jesters whose name would resonate through the ages. This ingenious jester of Jewish origin served in the court of the formidable Tsar Peter I the Great whose reign spanned from 1680 to 1725, during the Romanov dynasty. Lacosta was no ordinary jester. He was a man of sharp mind and vast culture, with experience in a variety of European territories. And mastering up to six languages, he defied expectations with his intelligence and cunning. Despite his heated arguments with Tsar Peter I, the monarch recognized and valued his valuable contribution granting him the honorary title of King of the Samoids and Dominion over several islands. In the Gulf of Finland, the figure of the jester transcended gender barriers, allowing both men and women to play this unique role at court, treated similarly. In a world of intrigue and danger, jesters shone with their wit and audacity, challenging conventions and offering a glimpse of fun in the dark corridors of power. History is full of whispers and laughter, waiting to be discovered and shared.